So most of us have had a group experience at some point or another that didn't go great. And it kind of soured us on the group experience overall, and maybe more than once since this happened. And a lot of times it comes down to one person just trying to kind of force their way, not really working as part of the team, but doing things differently and trying to fit a, a square peg in, into a round hole and just, uh, you know, just not working within the structure of the group or working together with the group. And as we know, the, the groups are sort of like a big machine, right? Like a car engine or another type of big machine where all the pieces are important and they all really have to work though together in order for the machine to run smoothly. This is all part of what we think of as systems theory. And, and so I wanted to spend a minute thinking about groups as systems and how systems theory operates in groups and the importance of that. So first of all, let's define system. What is a system? A system is a set of interconnected parts working together to form a whole in the context of a changing environment. Okay, so a group, you know, essentially we're going to look at this as a group as a system, which is again, a group is just a series of interconnected parts working together to form a whole in the context of a changing environment. So a group is very much a systems. And so system where, where this comes from, where the idea of systems originally came from, um, the inception of modern systems theory actually came from the, the field of biology with the proposal of general systems theory. In 1956, Ludwig von Bertalanffy, excuse me, a Canadian biologist, suggested that the traits of biological systems meaning input, transformation, and output, could in fact be applied to any system. And it's not just, uh, you know, part of biological systems, but really any system at all. So this started, you know, the, the, in 1956, the idea of general systems theory. Well, then in 1966, 10 years later, um, General systems theory was expanded to the study of organizations by Daniel Katz and Robert Kahn, who called the approach systems theory. So they dropped the general and just called it systems theory. Up to that point in time, organizations were seen as a machine, essentially, almost in a literal sense. The, the people included were seen as a, a machine. But Katz and Kahn suggested that this uh, did not accurately capture the dynamics of an organization. Thinking of it as a machine didn't strictly fit what happens in an organization. They felt that organizations, much like living organisms, are open systems that interact with their environment in order to acquire the resources that they need to grow and to survive. So they uh, uh, took the basic principles from the model of general systems theory that we see here that was uh, developed by von Bertalanffy and adapted them to a model that more specifically reflects the systems within an organization. So input, throughput, and output uh, in combination with feedback, both internal and external feedback, and, 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 and taking into account the importance of the environment uh, in, in all of that. So they developed this model of what they called systems theory. Now, there are a couple of important aspects of systems theory that I want to take a look at, um, in addition to just understanding that, that systems theory does involve input. Every group relies on input. It's got to have fuel. It's got to have things coming in that it can work with, and data and, and, and resources that it can work with. Then they use that in the area of throughput and refine them and, and put them to use as needed within the specific group. And then what comes out the other end is output, what they what they're able to develop. And all of this is influenced, of course, by feedback from both within the group, but also feedback um, from, you know, external sources and, and that they draw on from outside of the group. So um, there's all kinds of things happening here in systems theory. And this just kind of is on repeat. This whole this, anytime a, a group is in, in process and working on something. But there are a couple of important key kind of aspects that I want to look at here. The first is what we call interdependence. And this is something we talked about when we defined what a group is, that a group involves interdependence. It's that ripple effect, the idea that we throw a stone into a calm body of water and you get the, the ripples that affect the entire body of water, not just where the stone goes in, but, but the entire uh, body of water is then affected. That's interdependence. And interdependence that really has an impact on, on what we call synergy, right? This idea that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, that, that two plus two doesn't always equal four. Sometimes when you have synergy at work, two plus two equals five. And you get more than you would even just um, from those individuals if we were to, to calculate all of that, right? And it's kind of the idea, too, of the, the, the same thing that you get. The reason we braid rope, we create rope in that mansion, and that when we braid it, 
Right? When we find a thread, a single threads that are braided, they become exponentially stronger together. That is synergy, right? So it's not just that we have the tensile strength then of multiple uh, threads. It's that we have the tensile strength of those threads and then some added to it when we braid it together that creates that that synergy right and we get that in groups as well we can see that at work in groups that when we get people together we get this diversity of ideas and thoughts and creativity and we get people pushing each other and all these kinds of things that we see that synergy at work in group because of that interdependence that interconnectedness and it is certainly affected um, by that the interdependence creates that sort of synergy now we have to be cautious though because uh, where we have one thing you can also have the opposite thing right so we have synergy that's created there but we can also have negative synergy as i just said um, you can have in synergy you have two plus two equals five right two plus two can equal five and and people can push each other and and uh, work well together but at the same time when you get things together if things don't go the right way and they go the opposite direction two plus two can equal three and you get end up getting less than you would just from those individuals right uh, because of that interference because of that negative synergy or, or whatever happens there you get that we see this you know in one of my classic uh, favorite television shows growing up uh, was gilligan's island right and if you're familiar with gilligan's island you know that gilligan is in the red shirt and the hat sitting down at the bottom there gilligan's a good guy and these people are lost on an island they're always trying to find a way to get off the island but and gilligan means well he's got a big heart but he's always messing things up right so you have this synergy of these other groups you have the the you know intellect of the professor and the and the uh, the the the, uh, the workmanship of the the skipper right and the, and the creativity of the others and the resources that the others bring to this but then you also have gilligan who is working hard and trying to help but always finds a way to mess things up and and that's negative synergy so you have what everybody's bringing but it's coming up to less than it would individually if they were just to work on their own interdependence can create that as well so we do need to be cautious of that and be aware of that that we get this amazing output of synergy potentially but at the same time it could lead to you know if we get groupthink and things like that we we end up with negative synergy so we have to be aware of interdependence in that aspect of groups as systems this connection and this connectedness uh, which helps the group run uh, is also something that can be damaging if it's not running in the in the in the right way adaptability is another characteristic of groups as systems um, they depend on feedback groups in, in a system, we know that they depend on feedback, again, internal feedback, external feedback that they draw in as part of that input. And then it, throughout the process as feedback that they, that they pull into the throughput process. So they have to have this feedback, but there's this dynamic, what we call dynamic equilibrium, right? The, between change and stability. Uh, we're always trying to balance this out. We've got to balance because groups experience change all the time, but they also thrive in stability. They need both. They need that input. They need that feedback and they need this change, but they also need stability to be able to run effectively and to be able to continue to do their work effectively. So there's this equilibrium. There's this balancing act at work. And it comes down to a couple of different factors. We've got to examine and consider the degree of change. In other words, how much change is coming at one particular time at any given point. We've got to think about the rate of change. How quickly is this happening? And then the desirability of change. Is this something that the group wants or that, it's, that it seems like it's going to be a positive for the group? Or is it not? Is it so, you know, pe something people are going to resist? We've got to balance these things and, and work within these things. Sometimes they're within our control. Oftentimes they are not. So we've got to be prepared for change and we've got to examine though the degree, the rate and the desirability of change and try and balance that with some stability, understanding that change can be good. That, that input is necessary, that feedback is necessary to continue providing that fuel uh, for, for groups. It'd be like trying to run a car engine, but never putting in more gasoline. At some point, you're going to run out. You're going to need this feedback. You need this input to keep fueling that throughput so that you can, you can get the output at the other side. So adaptability in a, in a group as part of a system is going to be essential and going to be crucial that we balance all these things out and try and manage change in the best possible way with that dynamic equilibrium so we see that the groups are again they're an intricate kind of not not a machine exactly but they're an intricate system which is why we call it systems theory and when one of those gears gets out of whack it really throws off the entire uh, machine because of uh, that interdependence and you know so if there's an inability to adapt to change and to use change then that can really throw the system off but we need 
everybody working and pull, doing their part, running their piece of that system uh, efficiently and, and feeding it well and, and uh, you know, keeping it well maintained and so forth, doing all they can to maintain that system in order for a group to really be effective because a group really is a system and, and, and does, you know, run on and thrive on or not thrive on, on, on things related to that systems theory. If you have questions about systems theory, about groups of systems or anything related to that, please feel free to email me. In the meantime, I hope this gives you some understanding of what that means for group development and, uh, and the impact that it can have to understand systems theory as a part of that.